Hey guys, it's Cool Guy. Today I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to make Discord emojis properly. So I see all the time that we have Discord emojis on the servers and they're not cut out properly. They got um, black borders, they got squares, and they don't they generally don't look good. So <clears throat> basically, why would you want to do this? So a good example is this emote right here. So if I were to go ahead and just upload this image straight up to Discord, we would have some serious problems. We first of all, there is it's not in a square. Um, and we'd have these white borders and it just, it generally wouldn't look good, especially in the dark theme. So um, today I'm going to be showing you how to cut this out properly, make the background transparent, um, and basically make your emojis in Discord look way better. So the the program we're going to be using to do this is called GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a free open source software, Photoshop alternative. You can just head to GIMP.org and download the latest version. And super simple to download and install. So first thing we want to do after we install GIMP is we're going to go ahead and find our emo. So in this case, I'm going to use Manka S um, and make sure you open the image in new tab once you find the one that you like, and that will give you the full res version instead of this um, like half res version. <clears throat> so then we're going to go ahead and you can either save it to your computer or you can just copy it. In this case, I'm just going to copy it. And then we're going to go ahead and open up GIMP. All right, now that GIMP is open, this is sort of the screen you're going to be starting at. Um, and since I copied it to my clipboard, I'm going to go ahead and do Control V to paste it in. Alternatively, I think you can do Edit and then Paste right there. Um, and that'll, that'll just go ahead and paste it in. If you saved it to your computer, just open up the file um, in File Manager and just drag it in. That should work just fine. So now that we have the image in, um, we're going to go ahead and start cutting this out. So. If we just use something like the rectangle select, then it's not going to work properly, right? Because there's hard edges and we have we have curves here. We need to cut them out properly. And if we use something like the lasso tool, um, we have to like drag our mouse and it just generally doesn't work as well for something like this because now I have this loose end and there's no way to go back and fix it. So we're not going to use the lasso tool. The tool we're going to use is called the paths tool. This is basically like a more advanced free select tool, the lasso tool. Um, it lets you do curves like this more efficiently. And you can just click the icon that looks like that, or you can hit the B key on your keyboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by zooming in and we're going to click and drag on the direction that the stroke is going to go in. So in this case, I want to go this way. So I'm just going to click and drag that way. And you can see that there are these little tails that come up. And that's going to just going to show you like what direction basically it's going to curve in. So if we go and make the next line, you can see how that affects things. If I turn it more this way, you can see the curve goes a little bit more that way. And you can basically see how it behaves depending on how short or long I have it. So you're basically just going to want to make it so that this line right here, which is the actual selection, that's going to be as close as possible to the actual border of the emote. So we're just going to go ahead and continue on here. And you can always grab these little tails to fix them up. And you can even go back to previous ones and fix up the this one over here. And make sure you always go back to the most recent one if you want to continue. Because if you don't, um, it'll actually create a new stroke and that wouldn't be good. All right. So you can see we've come up to the edge. Oops. We've come up to the edge of the image here. In this case, um, I want to include this edge. So it doesn't really matter what happens here. It's it's uh, not going to select the image anyway. So we can just go around this pretty lazily. Um, and then we will continue over here. So again, I'm just clicking and dragging um, and occasionally fixing these things right here if they happen to be out of place. And here we have come across our first height band. So there are pretty much two strategies you can go with for this one. The first strategy in this case I think will work the best is we just make a teeny tiny um, curve right there. So that will let us, you know, you can see it works pretty well if I made it really, really large. You can see it doesn't really work, so we make it really small and we'll need to edit that in this one too. So that way it lines up just a bit better with that edge. So we will continue on Pepe here. And don't forget while you're making these, if you ever run into, if you ever make a mistake on a stroke, you can always come back, click it and change these tails and that'll pretty much fix anything. Um, here's another 
hard edge. And I was mentioning before the second strategy you can use. So the second strategy is you go right up to the edge. As you can see here, I need to fix this tail since it's too long. We can go up to this edge and go basically not on the edge, but make this like previous tail like really long. You can see that also makes a nice curve. And the more you play with the pass tool, you'll understand more how it works and how to make you know curves on the right places. So we will go ahead and continue making our curves. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the reason we're cutting it out manually like this is because this will work for any emote you want to do. So even if the background, the background on this emote happens to be pretty nice, it's plain white. So in theory, I could just um, basically select all the white and, and delete it manually, or sorry, automatically. Um, but this works for even if you have like a messy background. So if, say, for example, if I'm trying to cut out um, a person's face, for example, I wouldn't want to rely on automatic background removal because the background is usually not one solid color. Now we'll show you how to do the automatic background um, selection if it's a solid color in a bit, but first we're doing the manual method which is pretty much guaranteed to work on whatever type of image you're doing. So you can see we are nearing the first point that we made, so we've gone around the entire Pepe and we are back at the part point we started. So how do you end the path? So what we need to do is we need to make a path pretty darn close to the original. So here's the original, here's the one I'm on right now. So you can see they're fairly close together. And then what we need to do to finish off the path is we hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click the original point, the first point we made. Now we'll go ahead and just union them. They'll make them together. So if I click off of here, you can see that now they are connected. And a really common thing that happens is that this will sort of be like this or something. You can see that, you know, the, the path here is not on the line. So we just need to edit this tail to be smaller. And that will make it so that the, this path right here is nice and um, on the edge. So now you can see we can scroll out and inspect our work. You can see we've pretty much cut out the entire Pepe. And so what we need to do now is we need to hit the selection from path button. And that will basically make, you can see these marching ads, that means it's in our selection. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a, a control C copy that will copy this block of pixels. And you can see it even showed up over here. Um, and the reason why I did that is because I want to create a new image that um, is a square. You can see the image I'm working on right now is not a square. And so if I were to just get rid of the background and upload this to Discord, it'd be pretty weird. There'd be like space on this side. It would not work well. So what we're going to go ahead and do and do a control N to make a new image. And for Discord emotes, generally I found that 512 by 512 is a good size. It keeps the file size relatively low and it's also, I mean, it generally doesn't need to be any bigger than this. So there you go. And then we, since I copied it, we're going to go ahead and paste control V and we need to hit this new layer button. If I just let it go right now, it would actually go onto this white background and then we've just defeated the purpose of what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and click this new layer button and that will make the pasted layer a new layer. But you might notice that since this image was fairly big and I made it a 512 by 512 in this new square, um, Pepe is now out of bounds. Basically, you can see where the layer is, but clearly he's being cut off. So what we need to do is we need to do a unifying transform. So that is this tool right here. It's a shift T. So you just click this and then click on Pepe and you can see that there are these grab handles. And there's a lot of different transform things you can do here. But for now, we're just going to use this square transform. So not this inside one, because that'll actually make it, you know, perspective. So we undo that. Um, if you just click and drag this one, you can see um, it maintains the aspect ratio. That's exactly what we're looking for. And another cool trick is that if you hold down the control key, it'll actually zoom out, zoom in and out from the center. So that way you don't need to go ahead and move it later. So we will do that right now and get it as close as possible to those edges as you can. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make it good. And then once you're done, when you're happy with this, you can just go ahead and hit the enter key and I'll go ahead and scale it down. Cool. So now we have our Pepe emote. This image is pretty much ready. Last thing we need to do before exporting is turn off the background or just delete it because 
again, if we were to just export it with, with the background in place, then um, we would have just defeated the purpose of what we did. So we're going to go ahead and do a export. So you'll do a file and then export. And you can do Control Shift E to do that. And then I will go ahead and call it, I don't know, Pepe or just Maka S. Yes, that'll work just fine. And then export and make sure it's a PNG because that will let you have transparency. So go ahead and export and now it is exported. So, and now you are free to upload it to your Discord um, in case you're curious how you do that. Um, I know some people are new to Discord, so we will go ahead and go to our um, little pane right here, go to server settings. And then we go to emoji on the left pane and then pretty simple just click the upload emoji button and then scroll to where we saved it here it is and you will notice that discord requires the emoji to be under 256 kilobytes so if it ends up being larger than that you'll need to scale it down so 256 by 256 should be a fine resolution if it ends up being too big so we'll go ahead and double click that and you can see it just showed up right there and we are good and now we can go ahead and use it in our server. Ta -da. All right, awesome. So I mentioned before, we we're gonna show you how to do the automatic background removal. Um, it's not really automatic, it's just I'm selecting the white background instead of manually doing this. Again, this is not possible for every type of image. Um, some images you will need to go ahead and do the manual, you know, cutting out. But if it's possible, in this case, this is an image that would be very easy to automatically cut out all of this white part. So what we need to do is you can either use one of two tools. So there's a select by color tool and inside the same group, which you can access by right clicking, there's select by or fuzzy select. And fuzzy select is the one that I prefer because it's less destructive. Um, you can use select by color if you know that only your background is that color. The reason why I don't like to use um, select by color is that you can see if I select this white um, and I hit delete oops we need to add alpha channel to make sure we can make it transparent if I hit delete you can see that we have also deleted portions of Pepe's eyes and that is not what we want to do so we're going to go ahead and undo that and if you use the fuzzy select it will select colors that are basically the same but not into basically where there's a border so in this case, it will only select this outside part. You can see where the marching ants end. Um, and it, it doesn't really go inside Pepe, um, his eyes or anything or whatever. And we'll go ahead and hit the delete key. And you will notice that there is still a white edge on it. And that's for the most part fine. But if you want to make it extra perfect, what you can do is you can do select and then grow. And that will basically make our selection just a teeny tiny bit bigger. In this case, I'll make it one pixel bigger, and I found that that's generally fine. So we will grow it and then hit the delete key again. And you can see now those white fuzzy things are non-existent. They're gone. So that's how you do the automatic background removal. It's sort of automatic, not really. Um, and you can do a select and then none to basically get rid of those marching ants. And then from here, you can just copy all of this and make it a square. Um, same procedure as for this one, the, the one we did manually, it's the same exact procedure. You can just uh, make a new image, scale it down, and export, and it's, it's exactly how it works. So hopefully this was helpful, and I showed you guys how to create your Discord emojis properly, cut them out in GIMP, which is free and open source, super easy. Um, if this helped you at all, maybe subscribe, that'd be nice. Um, so that's the end of this tutorial. I will see you guys later. Bye.